difficult, difficult, women. Good day. Good day, madame. <laughs> I've been watching Bridgerton, so I'm I was very d- in the mood. I just oh, was hello. Gonna say that. I oh, was watching some too because I saw you post about it. Well, my dear, I am uh, uh, Katie, Miss Katie. Oh, it's a fancy meeting you here. <laughs> my name is Marie. And this is the Difficult Women to Podcast. <laughs> the, the Difficult Women the, 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 the Podcast. Difficult Women to Podcast. Yeah, I'm totally consumed by that show at this mo- <laughs> moment in time because it's all I have. I started watching it because I saw you and your friend posting about it. And I was like, oh, right, this thing. And I, it's so good. It's like so <sighs> bad, but it's so good. It's so bad, but so good. High I just class love, trash. And I love watching it with my mom because she reads novels that talk all about that time. And so every, any question I have of the era, my mother has the answers. And she'll also be like, that's not historically accurate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I do like how, I mean, have you been picking up how they'll play uh, like Thank oh, You Next, but like yes. in a, like a quartet? Yes. A oh, quartet. they played ta- Taylor Swift's Wildest Dreams on like a on a violin. I was like, oh, amazing. is that Tay-Tay? <laughs> While they make love, they're just doing it to Tay-Tay. It's amazing. Anyway, it's great. It's perfect. It's so Bridgerton, good. that's what it's called? Bridgerton? Bridgerton on Netflix, y'all. If you want to watch, if you have internet, you can watch it. I, however, (laughs) yeah. So what's going on? No internet, and yet by the magical powers of something, we're able to continue to pod. I know it's funny. I'm like, I have no Wi-Fi. I have no internet because there was a bomb in Nashville on Christmas Day. It was eight miles away from my parents' house, and honestly, like we had no idea. So for a couple hours. You know, we're doing our Christmas thing and my dad turns on the news about 8.30, 9 o'clock, and then there it is on the news. And then slowly friends are texting because they, on East Nashville, the area I would, I'm looking for apartments and stuff, they could feel, they could feel the, the boom. So, my good my good friend growing up mm-hmm. uh, moved to Nashville about a, maybe a year ago now or so, and she lives, I guess, a mile away, two miles away, and she mm-hmm. said that they, they were, she and her kid were awake and then mm. they felt or heard something and they were like, what is happening? So yeah. it, it was like even miles away, two miles, one mile, you could still hear it or feel it. Right. Our first reaction was that we thought, because it was an RV that exploded, um, we thought it was like a meth lab gone wrong. Mm. That was our first, you know, I mean, too yeah. much Breaking Bad. <laughs> sure. I mean, but but, I, get, I get it. I get that. Well, when but. I, so I started like being over here in New York, I heard about it because of you. And then mm-hmm. I got obsessed. <laughs> so I've been like all <laughs> over Twitter, all over Facebook, reading everybody's posts about it. And I think now the news is kind of caught up with all the theories and stuff. But it sounds like, did you see that they like have targeted this one guy? Mm-hmm. They haven't found the guy because they think he may have blown up with oh. the explosion. But he, so he uh, was living in Antioch. So Where my sister owns a house, yes, Antioch. So, yes, Antioch, <laughs> the great city Tennessee, of Antioch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which all the crazies are like going crazy because I guess there's a mention of a town called Antioch in the Bible and they were like, see, see the prophecy. <laughs> so it's like, and everyone who's from Tennessee is like, no, no, it's not the same kind of Antioch. But uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the guy, I can't think of his name That's right so now, funny. but. But the guy had a, had a, a house, and up until like two weeks ago, the neighbors are saying there was an RV that looks exactly the same that was parked in his yard, mm. and now the RV's not there. Mm. And the house he had given for free to mm. this like 25-year-old girl and her family. He just had, gave his yep, house away? Yep. He, mm. There was two pieces of property he had, and he just gave them to her. So that's so creepy. One, and they were, one was in November of 2020. And I think one was either a little before that or after, maybe in 2019. Makes so you rethink a, uh, duplexes because it was a duplex. And I just wonder. I don't know. How that neighbor is feeling. Yeah, that sucks. Because <laughs> <You're like, laughs> I've like, been looking oh. at renting a duplex. I'm like, well, what if the person next door is a bomber? I mean, yeah, you never know. Just or sharing could, a wall with. Or you could become besties. I mean, you know, either way. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> never know. 2021 never know. here comes yeah. love yeah uh-huh. it's all good but what was the end of that story just that he oh i know the whole point of what i was going to say was that his neighbors and his some of his friends have been saying like yeah he was like a real paranoid 5g guy ah uh, the eight yeah that's mm-hmm. and so he blew up near the and I, I when they said at&t building i was like i bet this is a 5g guy mm. so if yeah. this really is the guy i mean they're, they're not 100 percent sure but 
Right. He's a big suspect. Um, I looked up yeah. 5G. Oh, please tell us the whole. Because I, I was thinking about buying a new phone. I decided not to. I was like, my phone's fine. Because <laughs> so, <laughs> they're so expensive. Why are they so expensive? But I anyway, I was thinking about buying a new phone. And I was looking at the new whatevers, the 12s. And they're going to all be 5G. And I was mm-hmm. like, am I going to die if I get a 5G phone? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anymore. I don't know who to believe. And I just looked up an article saying the reason why people are afraid of 5G stems from this one scientist guy from 2000. Mm-hmm. And uh, in 2000, that was when they were starting to introduce wireless computers into schools. Mm-hmm. And people were like, is this going to be dangerous for the kids? And this guy had done some studies and he was like, yes, it's going to cause crazy cancer and all sorts of things. And he had this one chart where it's like it said the higher the waves, the faster like the waves or whatever, the mm-hmm. more likely you're going to get cancer and die. Mm-hmm. And then people went back to be like, oh, God, that looks terrible. And then other scientists were like, this is not true. <laughs> this is uh. not true at all. Uh, in fact, it turns out that the higher the frequency, the safer the um the waves or whatever you're my scientist the only uh something like x-rays that's Mm -hmm. not necessarily the case but it's a different kind of wave so x-rays can be kind of dangerous but they're not using x-ray waves when they're doing wireless technology right so and the other thing that i learned was that your skin is a natural barrier to any of those waves coming through so the, your skin is and you and it protects like your inner your innards your gizzards and stuff <laughs> not a and doctor exactly <laughs> let me check your gizzards over skin there. Uh, protects your innards uh, that's what that skin is for <laughs> yeah but it's true and the reason why you know that that's true is that your skin is a very good barrier also against another thing that creates a lot of dangerous radioactive waves and that's the sun the sun i was so you guess can't the sun yeah for 5, good 000. guess yeah wow. so they, so you know you don't get stomach cancer from the sun mm-hmm. and so that's what they were saying so anybody if you're worried about 5g like i was like i'm not sure it's it's fine don't blow up buildings for that what's so interesting is here it is what two days later and uh my parents have internet and stuff but i came back to my place in in the burbs fucking suburbs and we have nothing and this is a scary thing i can't even set the security alarm on the house I can't, like, our phones, like, even the cell phone service isn't working. So, like, I can't make phone calls, barely. Um, I mean, right now I'm using a hotspot on my phone to connect to my computer, and that seems to be working just fine. But um, can't you- access bank, can't, you know, I mean, without this, like, the hotspot thing. I, I mean, and I had to Google how to do this because <laughs> one of my friends was like, just do the hotspot. And I'm like, what's a hotspot? <laughs> Everybody has a hotspot if you have an iPhone, by the way. <laughs> Everybody's got a high spot whether you have an iPhone or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's Oh, God. I think I've lost my hotspot in 2020. <laughs> uh, but I mean, yeah, this yeah. is like some true domestic terrorist shit. This is terrifying. And the fact that like this RV pulled downtown, also in the location I was just looking at apartments, driving around just the other day looking at apartments, um, that he could... The creepy thing was that uh, recording that oh. he had played. So it, there, on 15 minute loop, it was like a 15 minute countdown of like p- evacuate this area. And so it was not intentional to like hurt people, but certainly to hurt definitely AT&T because it has knocked out so many people's um, internet, Wi-Fi, cell phone service, all that, all the above. It's anyway. crazy. Well, also that 911 <laughs> service. Yeah, Right. So before I knew, before I like knew about the AT and T building specifically, somebody was saying something about it had had it happened to, or I guess maybe I didn't know about the AT and T building. But the point is, one of my first thoughts about it was like full blown V for Vendetta type stuff, uh-huh, where it right. was like a cr- I imagined like a crew of people because it was very well organized in terms of like having the announcement go off and then all that. Right. Um. It felt like a movie and. Uh, I thought maybe there was like a bigger scheme, like they were taking down the internet so that they could like break into a bank, like a bank yeah. heist or something. Yeah. But I guess not. I know. I just watched Die Hard the night before. Yeah, you're just like, <laughs> Whoa. I woke up the next day to that and I was like, Hans no. Gruber, what have you done? <laughs> yeah. God, it's so crazy. That's another thing about this guy. Apparently he has a um, he has like a background in security technology so mm. things like announcements and alarms he right. has connections oh. too so like it oh, kind of makes gosh. it all kind of comes together yeah. 
Well, the story will sure be developing this week, but yeah, um, yeah, maybe everyone will know about it. But also, time. I mean, we all need. I'm taking like, I'm I'm starting to look at like, okay, how then do I keep cash on me at all times, or I do I, you know. I know. I also got a text message yesterday that my concealed license, uh, if I want to apply for one, I have just a, a, the rest of the week to apply for my state, for my concealed weapon. Is it because they're going to change the law in 2021? I don't know. But well, gonna what a text. Your, are you going to get your weapon? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, God. I got my bare hands. That yeah. is all I need. Yeah. Kind of. I really need my phone to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, so I, I can you. Google how to protect myself. But well, this is some serious shit. Like, this is some, like... No, I mean, this if is... a crazy guy who owns an RV could do this, just... Oh, oh God. Okay, never mind. I'm not going to stop talking about that sort of stuff. Well, but maybe that helps lead us into our topic today, which is uh, 2021 predictions. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to tap into our inner, oh. inner per- whatever, <laughs> our inner doctor. Wait, did you see the conjunction? That was a nice kickoff. So I went, it was, it's been very weird weather here. So it's been like hurricane weather and then also just freezing, just awful freezing. So the day of the conjunction, I was like, I'm going, I have nothing to do. There's nobody here. <laughs> I'm just alone. I feel like I'm in, what is that movie? Castaway. I feel like I'm in Castaway, but in my apartment because like I, there's nobody. So I like, uh, but I was like, I'm going to go and make an effort to see the conjunction. So I went up to Greenpoint, Brooklyn, and there's this like waterfront area there. And because mm-hmm. you need to have like, it was going to be kind of low in the sky. So I needed to have it like not buildings everywhere around me. So I went out toward the water in like 20 degree weather, which is mm. kind of a bad idea. And it was so overcast. Damn it. And there was this one light coming off of this, like a piece of equipment in Manhattan. And everybody there was like, I think that's it. And I'm like, that's <gasps> definitely a light. <laughs> but I just didn't want to ruin people's <laughs> evening. But everybody was like, yep. And they had binoculars. I'm like, that's a fucking light coming oh, off of like a crane. But um, <laughs> it's fine. Whatever. Well, I, I hiked up to this place on a bridge. It was very beautiful. But then I couldn't figure out which what I was supposed to be looking at. Um, so I was like Googling it on Twitter and trying to see. And then I just slowly like inch towards six feet away. This father and son was like, um, pst, <laughs> hi. Oh, hello. Is that is that what I'm supposed to be looking at? <laughs> and they were like, I think so. We think so. We have this app and that's what it says. That's what so. I know. There's an app. So I like was I kept pulling my app up being like, well, it's over there. <laughs> I can't see it, but I know it's there. <laughs> um, there was definitely a couple of people like full blown in meditation mode like out on the ground and stuff I did I did some meditation as the sun was setting because I thought that you would see it right after sunset nope it's like an hour after sunset oh yeah so. I know I waited for an hour in the freezing yeah. cold <laughs> me too <laughs> it's like oh uh, so I meditated then as that's well that's nice though that's yeah. good I, I did some sort of intention setting oh that's nice yeah see look at yeah. us guys I know it's a we're, whole new year. We are working overtime to make this next year better. We gotta do everything we can. Every single thing. Yeah, I came home and burnt this witch wand thing. Yeah, uh, there's no better time to burn a witch wand <laughs> than in the Great Conjunction. It's true. I mean, yeah, for sure. Right? Yep. I don't know. So this this conjunction, <laughs> I've talked about it before. I think it'll lead us into this conversation because one of the things they talk about in this conjunction time. We're moved. We're now in the age of Aquarius and things. Um, Mm. One of the things they talk about, and I've said this before, is that we're moving into a time less of uh, individualism and more Mm. into community and working together. And I think that like I really am hanging on to this idea a lot because I think that in my view, that is the thing we need more than anything right now Mm -hmm. in this weird time. So I'm kind of hopeful. I don't know if that's all wishful thinking, but, you know. That the community will come together and rise yeah. above all this evil. I think we, I mean, think of all the things that w- where we need community right now. Coronavirus, got to work together, yep, wear work our masks. Together. Yep. Mm-hmm. Take take that vaccine. Mm-hmm. Got to work together on that. What do you think about that? Do you think when do, uh, I'm hopeful that uh, the vaccine will be more available by, they're saying maybe April or May. Oh, dear God. Just by my birthday. <laughs> August 2021, Dollywood, y'all. And yeah. everybody's invited. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, yeah. 
Did you ask your doctor when you think you'd be able to get yours? Have you been able to talk no. to a medical professional? No, not at all. Me neither. <laughs> I don't think they know. I mean, I think that that's yeah. one of the things. So that's one thing that's so crazy about going into this new year is that like, of course, we never know what a year will bring as we learned last year mm-hmm. <laughs> right at the beginning of that year. But like this feels crazy because we, I, I think we really don't know what the situations are. But um, we're hopeful, right? So vaccine. Yes, very exciting. But but community, right? If people don't all take it, right, we're in trouble. <laughs> well, are they in trouble? <laughs> no, we're all in trouble. We're because, all in trouble. So, uh, yeah, because they, we have to the, get ninety percent of people have to right, take it for herd immunity. Right. So we'll do another episode on vaccine. But anyway, that's one thing where everyone can work together. Mm-hmm. Um, I also somebody was talking about how. They think that the only thing <laughs> that will bring us all together is if aliens come down. I I support that. I don't like that. I, know <laughs> I don't, you don't like I that. Don't like that. But, then, don't but if aliens. an alien comes down, all of us humans have to work together to fight off the alien. That's it's the idea. Fir- it's, the, it's not bipartisan, although I'm sure that they'll try to make it they'll political. Make it. Yeah, they will make it political <laughs> and we're doomed. But maybe we're not. We're totally doomed. Maybe. I just really yeah. don't want aliens to come. Also, so things like more practical things like working from home. Do you think we'll still be working from home? Absolutely. I think we're going to see a total change in real estate, commercial real estate. Um, I hope I'm hopeful that uh, mom and pop stores and restaurants and things, I don't know, get more support from our government or more support from their communities or I don't know. I've been really impressed with a lot of places around here in Nashville of doing only takeout, but the way that they do it is really convenient. The other day I picked up Monel's fried chicken for our Christmas dinner and they were so proficient at like, and this is a, you know, a Nashville family owned restaurant that has been here for years and they did it in such a cool way where it was like literally you did everything online and then you drive up and then give them their name and pop the trunk. They put it right in. It was very safe and I don't know the line was around the block so that was kind of exciting for them so I'm hopeful for family-owned operated businesses that can continue to stay open yeah I don't know yeah no for sure I mean hopefully moving after the holiday season and like everybody don't you know do social distanced shopping and all that stuff um but I think that uh there you know that's why I'm hopeful for like the spring and the summer again because I think that then we can have another push for I don't believe that the government's gonna do jack shit for anybody anymore I mean I think we all kind of know that that's not the case but one thing that's kind of been cool about this whole thing is the way people some people have been able to be really creative in the way that they you know, innovation kind of comes from necessity. Is that the saying? Yes. <laughs> um, and I think some people have really been able to figure out how to make this work, even if it's just like by hanging in there kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I know not everybody has p- had that luxury and all that, but um, I'm hopeful that that's another thing I'm hopeful about in 2021 is just more and more, um, well, more and more um, innovation coming out of this right. thing. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really hopeful about like, environmental stuff moving forward yes i am too i'm hopeful that joe biden's team is going to be really zero zeroing in on environment and climate change and i feel like they'll certainly be more in it than trump's team i i worry that like biden's team is still a little moderate but if we can just keep pushing you know i I think he's already like Mm -hmm. moving toward less moderation than he would have before yeah but we can we need to push him a little more but what was the deal with um wasn't uh Mer- merkel Mer- merkel from merkel. G- germany <laughs> germany <laughs> uh, andrea andrea angela angela, angela andrea Mer- urkel <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, wasn't didn't she have this like whole plan where she was like we're not now that we've had this sort of disruption in mm-hmm. our lives mm-hmm. we're gonna actively move forward with doing only sustainable shit great yeah did she say yeah i don't i didn't know that she said that, that. was like that's a amazing. while ago I, I i don't know i should check back in to see how that's going but like even just saying that proclaiming right. that as a person you know who's in power is good and then there was like i think japan said they were like yes. you know what but just by 2030 tokyo specifically had a 2030 goal of having 
all vehicles be like electric vehicles or have like a huge portion of vehicles be set all they their goal was for all new cars sold in the city to be hybrids or electric vehicles by 2030 whoa that's something mm-hmm. tokyo is already committed to reducing greenhouse gas house gas emissions to virtually zero by 2050 I mean, that's a change. That's a shift in perspective, right? We were kind of like rolling along as business as usual up until this whole crazy pandemic. And I do think it's made some people stop and rethink how we do shit. No, I think you're right. I think people are getting creative. And is it do you think it's more because they're concerned about community? (laughs) Mm. I mean, or partly it's business. But you know what? Whatever, whatever motivates people to make good, positive change. That's fine. If it's money. okay, you know. Right. If you're like, oh, I have to treat people better because I'll make more money. okay, you know, it's not ideal way of looking at it, but it's certainly better. I have to pay my employees more because then no one will shop at my Walmart anymore. Then, okay, you know. So that's the other thing I'm hoping for is that we start really like I feel like that kind of came and went the like attention for you know essential workers Mm. but now that people are really struggling right now financially there's just it's not sustainable we can't Mm -hmm. just allow everybody to be starving to death in america that's not i'm just hopeful for that people will really start talking more of universal health care and also universal income Mm -hmm. (laughs) for the first time ever you know i know andrew yang that wasn't his idea he's you know just universal income but we're actually understanding how much that makes sense right now. Well, and especially as the robots take over the earth. Yes. <laughs> you right. know, like, how do you expect? Right. This is sort of a taste for a robot takeover because <laughs> it's like w- oh w- if people don't have jobs and they're and they can't make money, then what we have is like crazy poverty and crazy, you know, just desperation and all that stuff. And like, that's not un- that we don't need that. Nobody mm-hmm. needs that. Mm-hmm. Did you see that there's been, by the way, if anybody sees this, I liked this uh, post, but someone said, uh, if you see anybody stealing food right now, mm. don't, you didn't see it. Mm. Because that's the, apparently food theft has been going way up, but it's like, yeah, <laughs> like, of yeah. course, people can't afford anything. Right. So, uh, yeah. Other 2021 predictions? Well, travel. I mean, I, I think people oh. are, I would love to just be able to jump back on a plane and go all over the world. But I think that what we've been seeing definitely so far is more domestic travel. And I think that that is definitely going to stay a thing mm-hmm. for a while. Well, I did a vision board already. Ooh. And I have it right here next to me. <laughs> and one of my, all of my basically is just traveling. So look at this bitch. She's about to go hike another mountain. Where's she going in the United States? Probably in the U.S. I'm going to hike the Smoky Mountains this year. So nice. putting that out there. I mean, those are great also, trips. Yeah. Look at this. That's, is this that a girl. Drum I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take up the drums. Um, no, I want to go on a romantic retreat in a hut with a lover. Yes. And then I guess this guy is just bringing champagne. I thought he was playing a flute. Oh, no, it looks like he's de- he's delivering a pork tenderloin or something. Uh, anyway, yeah. all yes, of mine are travel. Amazing. That's my that's the point. But also sea urchin or uni. You can't I have, eat that. I know I'm allergic. But here's the thing: I have a couple of these cut out pictures of sea urchins, and it's because next year my biggest thing is to roll the dice. That's going to be my my mantra: to go oh, ahead, God. roll the dice. No, this is <laughs> not a good idea. <laughs> I know Does I'm a little allergic to seafood. I'm allergic to. <laughs> but next 2020, roll the dice. Go for it. Double down. That's my mantra. <laughs> because we could die tomorrow. So you just got to You don't want to be asphyxiated by sea urchin, though. Well, uh, you can do that only if you have like a real quick ride to 911 or to the hospital yeah. or something. <laughs> got to make sure I can call 911 oh, God. when I'm eating. <laughs> or just get like an EpiPen or something. Right. You can right. just keep stabbing yourself. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah travel I I need to it feels like everybody around me has gone somewhere in this During pandemic this time yeah yeah the furthest I've been is Yonkers when you oh, drove me that to Yonkers like, that's just, <laughs> Yonkers. that was my vacation oh, I have not left the city at all I've never this has never happened to me before I don't have anywhere to go and I have no one to take <laughs> me so I'm just like this is the problem you guys when you don't know how to drive <laughs> 
oh, <laughs> God. stuck in the city. <laughs> I can't even rent a car and just like drive out. And also rental cars in New York are so expensive too. Yeah. At the moment. I mean, I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could get on a bus and go somewhere, but where would I go? I don't want to sit in a bus with all these people. Mm. Oh, gosh. I know. I but know. anyway, well, so one of them, I need to get the hell out of Dodge. You got to get out of New point. York. Yeah. Yeah. I have a friend that just bought a car, so I'm going to bugger her about it. Ooh, that's exciting. Get out. <laughs> yeah. I do think that, um, I mean, if, if campsites and stuff must be thriving right now because it's like one of the few places people feel like they can go. Like those mm-hmm. camp, don't you rent camp su- pots? <laughs> how, does that, how does that work in some places? So, how does that work? I need to figure that do out. Do you rent pods to camp? Uh, <laughs> camp, camp. Camp pods. Um, Yes, you do. You have to reserve them. And a lot of them are doing a great job at being contactless. So you do all yeah. the reservations online and then they send you your site and then you go and you don't have to talk to anybody. That's great. I mean, that's kind of amazing. what you want from camping anyway, right? Is to be isolated in the woods. Yes, exactly. You don't want to have to like check in with Helen. <laughs> I will say, I will say I've been isolated in the city. So isolated in the woods. I mean, at least the change of scenery, but <laughs> it's sort of the same thing. I mean, I would give anything to just be isolated back in New York rather than the suburbs. <laughs> but I, that's, I'm changing that. That's a big thing for next year. New place. Yeah, I'm excited new, about that. Yeah, for you. New apartment someplace. Not downtown anymore. <laughs> oh. Or maybe I was going to call the realtor and be like, how much is that rent now? <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, we talked about that. I think that that's a good idea. That's a New York way of looking at it. It's like, oh, this that's neighborhood true. got crazy. Can I, Bring down that rent. I'll come by. Yeah, <laughs> bring fine. down that rent. I will sign up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I was reflecting this past year. I broke up with my boyfriend. I started a new job and I moved. So this next year, yeah, all the changes. So this next year, I'd like to find a little bit more of a ground myself more in, I don't know, just set some more roots, but also make the loose, the roots like just like near the top. So you could just like pull them up if you need to. Yeah. (laughs) Just like, like, like a, like a a baby or something. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Amazing. No, I, it's funny. Like this year too, for me has really made me change what I want and I don't totally know exactly still like usual but I um definitely family has become mm. a thing where I'm like oh god this is what it's like to die alone I mean I literally am in my house all the time thinking about like oh this is like what happens to people when their spouses die and their kids like don't come and visit them and then oh, they're god. just at home all <laughs> the time like this is my, is this my future like I don't know about this so I definitely um, need to figure out a way. Dating in 2021, what do we do? Do we think it's going to get better? Do we think we're going to be able to figure out dating? Do you think it'll be enough desperate men that they'll want to come and see me? <laughs> like, like, ready for me? I'm ready. Well, here's the thing. It's not that I've ever been against online dating before. I've always been, you know, I've done it through the years. I haven't had much success, but for some reason I now it's like this is the only way I'm going to meet people. So there's like the, you know, any kind of negative connotation about online dating. I mean, I still kind of have a little bit, but but there how else am I going to meet anybody? I I there was a bird watcher um the other day on my hike and I kind of like lingered by him (laughs) because he was kind of cute right but like he didn't he was too he was way into birds looking at his birds yeah uh looking for hooters um (laughs) my kind of guy yeah yeah exactly no it's funny though because for me I've always been very like gung-ho about online dating but Mm -hmm. I realized that one of the reasons why is because I'm willing to like meet anybody without having a conversation with them online at all so it's just like hey you want to get a drink sure because I don't like chatting I don't like the chatting I hate the small talk I can't I just hate it so much so Mm -hmm. I've like I'm crashing and burning in the online dating arena right now because I just (laughs) cannot I don't I don't get a good sense of people every time I had this one experience Mm -hmm. like years ago and I think it's just like the thing that stays with me forever where there was this guy he was so cute online and oh my god we just had the most amazing rapport like chatting I was like this guy is my husband for sure Mm -hmm. and then we met and we chatted for too long is really what happened you know what I mean but it was the chats were going great and then we met and he was like 
It was like a Cyrano de Bergerac scenario. Oh, no. It must have, somebody else must have been sending oh. the chats because this person was the least witty, interesting, oh. not very smart person ever. And I was like, this is a nightmare. Because I was like, this, and even when he walked in, that's another thing that happens, right? The first time, the first impression you get of somebody so frequently, you're like, oh, no. <laughs> you know what I, I know. mean? And he walked I in. I was like, he's so cute. I like him so much. This is going to go great. And then it was just like, just downhill from there so this idea that we would i could spend any amount of time chatting with somebody and then yeah the chemistry it's chemistry that is why yeah i don't know lots of walks lots of walks 2021 walks sound good i mean you know i'm open to walks i'm open to walking (laughs) like i can walk i know how to walk (laughs) but this is what but but then what do you do if you want to kiss this person like no i mean get a rapid test like what the fuck or do you only is there going to be a place on bumble that's going to say like vaccinated like (laughs) right right. jesus maybe there should be (laughs) well that's one thing i am finding that i'm more attracted the catch train too is i'm more attracted to the guys that are like very serious about social distancing wear a mask whatever but those are also the people that you're less likely to see in person right and then the ones that are like hey baby let's get together tonight i'm like no we can't i don't want to do that people uh, down here because i guess you know for some people's brains the pandemic isn't a happening right. this one is, i've been asked out to dinner so many times i'm like inside you want to go to dinner inside do you want what I, I won't even go to a patio with a stranger yeah but that's just where i'm at with my risk management totally and but. i just haven't seen anybody in weeks oh katie <laughs> no it's fine uh i realized though as i was finishing up my last day of work before the break i was like oh i just realized that work is my social life so oh. like, but it's fine um <laughs> everything's fine it's gonna be fine uh also everybody left for christmas which no you're not supposed to leave you're not supposed to go anywhere for christmas why did everybody leave me it's fine. yeah people are um, people went home even though we wrote a song about don't going don't go home well that's people you know still went home that's the people should listen to us more <laughs> <laughs> everything we say is correct so i don't know why they don't listen to us more. skin protects your innards <laughs> yeah that's right um yeah i don't even know i'm not even totally sure what all my it's it's so this year feels so crazy to have um uh resolutions personally because I don't really know what's going to happen. So it feels a little crazy to be like, I'm going to lose 10 pounds because like, <laughs> are we just going to be living in the woods in like six months? Or like, what? <laughs> I don't know. But I do kind of want to lose 10 pounds. So I mean, that's on my list. <laughs> that's on my list always. I mean, but I mean, I, I just want to be healthy. I want to, I was reading, um, Oh, I do this like accountability group thing with some girlfriends once a month. And I was telling them that I lately have been having negative talk to myself. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this during seasonal depression Mm -hmm. episode of just like negative talk and how you have to change your, it's all positive talk. So as I go into 2021, I really am just like embracing this positive talk towards myself because I don't know, we don't know anything anymore, but I just want to... Be putting out all good vibes <laughs> to the yeah. universe, and um, but but if you could have one mantra, mantra like one thing that gets you out of bed, what would it be for twenty twenty one? So I have this is a little bit heartbreaking, but I think but it it really hit me hard. So I spent Christmas alone, and it was nice. It was nice, <laughs> um, but I we have a friend John from St. Louis who had you know, caught wind through the podcast that I was going to be alone. And he was very sweet, very incredibly generously sweet and sent a little care package for me. <laughs> and it really like warmed my heart to because he was like, I know you're going to be alone. And I know you because of the seasonal depression episode, you know, struggle with depression, especially around this time. So I it just was very mm. moving that he was did that. And he sent a CD uh with Liz Long Longley Liz Longley who he's he's like friendly with and she's a very beautiful artist like a sort of folky type mus- musician mm. very good and it's like a little Christmas album so it was like the perfect little soundtrack for my Christmas morning and I made myself pancakes and I was doing the <laughs> things you know trying to make it Christmassy and the last song that popped up on her album is she does a cover of Let There Be Peace on Earth Oh, and oh my God, I mean, just 
I just like broke down sobbing. Mm. So beautiful. And that song, I forget about that song, but I just sat. I just stopped with my pancakes. I just cried <laughs> listening to the song. And though if the if you don't know the song, the lyrics are let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Mm. And I was thinking wow. about that sentence. And I've heard that song a million times, but it just means something different. It hit different in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> and that all of a sudden I'm feeling like this is what I think I want to focus on in the new year is that when I think about peace on earth I think even like fighting on the internet Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and like that's not peaceful that's not helping Mm -hmm. that's not you know and you know I love to fight on the internet (laughs) my favorite pastime um so I all I'm really motivated by trying to bridge this gap a little bit more i know people it's not a popular opinion to try to like bring us all together right now because people are so angry and for good reason at like the other side right Mm -hmm. but they're both sides are so angry at the Mm -hmm. other side Mm -hmm. and i think that like especially as like liberals i don't think we think of it like that we don't think that we've done anything to upset the other side Mm -hmm. we think that well they're crazy well they think the exact same thing about us Mm -hmm. So it's like, yes, there's always going to be people that are just full blown nuts Mm -hmm. on both sides. Mm -hmm. We definitely have liberal people that are nuts, but there's all these people in the middle. We've talked about this before that are somewhere, you know, and we politics has separated us in such a disgusting, horrible way. And I just even and it's not even that like I'm going to try to apologize for other people or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I think this idea of like, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Mm. What can I do? And even if it even if it is just being peaceful, Mm -hmm. even if it is just me centering myself and finding peace inside of myself, that Mm. is a first step. Wow. And if we all did that. Mm hmm. That's it. Then they're peace mm-hmm. on earth. So, I mean, it's not even about me preaching to other people about be peaceful, do this, change this. It's about me just taking care wow. of myself. Yeah. 80. It hit me like a ton of bricks when I, thank you, John. So wow. yet another way he's like helped open my mind. Um, but I think anyway. That's a, yeah. I think that that's spot on. I had a rough day last week and luckily I had therapy that day and and it was the day of the j- conjunction and I'm a Virgo and my planets Jupiter and Saturn were all fucked up mm-hmm. that week and then mm-hmm. of course the conjunction so anyway I was feeling very anxious and just like very scared I don't know why but and so I was telling my therapist I was feeling like this and um she really you know the being mindful and and just stopping and realizing what is just in front of you it is a beautiful thing to be able to just center yourself and open your eyes and breathe and then look around you and be in the moment fully. So it is kind of exactly what you're saying. Of yeah. like, if you can find peace within yourself, then and lead and also lead with um, kindness and like and peace. Other people will feel that as well, I'm sure. But I like that it starts with you. Right. I think also if you think about mm. it, haven't you been in situations too where just on a practical level where like I've, this happens to me all the time where I'm in New York and somebody is in a bad mood, right? Mm-hmm. And on the street take you down and they want to take you down and they're like, hey, buddy, get out of my way. And my what I try to practice is if I'm in the right headspace, I'll be like, oh, my goodness, I'm so sorry I was in your way. And then the minute you do that, so often the person's like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't mean to snap you. Or like, oh, it's okay. And you kind of like diffuse those situations, Mm -hmm. you know. And if I'm in a bad headspace, I'm like, fuck off, motherfucker. And then that doesn't help. And then you're screaming on the street. So it's like, though. I think exactly what you're saying. It's like that mindfulness, that awareness. If you're centered, you're unperturbable. Mm -hmm. You know, there's you don't Mm -hmm. you're not going to be bothered by these external situations and I think especially when we're in such a like stressful time Mm -hmm. that that imperturbability of being able to to say okay yes I'm not putting my head in the sand I'm not ignoring that there's Mm -hmm. a problem Mm -hmm. but in this exact moment I think I said this on the pod before but that I love that phrase um what's wrong with right now if I don't think about it 
Mm. And if you don't mm-hmm. get stuck mm-hmm. in your head about these things, you realize like, oh, well, right now I'm sitting talking to my friend. Mm-hmm. What's mm-hmm. wrong with that? That sounds right. great. Right. You know? Sounds great. So yeah. that's, I think, my big one. Well, my therapist really, as I was telling her how scared I was and anxious and all that sort of stuff, like going back to the gratitude journal, I want to be better at that, writing that every single day. You write down three things you're grateful for that day and it keeps you present and keeps your, your perspective on life, I think, in check too because – we are so lucky and so blessed and so so fortunate to have food and the house and jobs yes. and all the above, you know? Yeah. So when I you think, remind yourself of that, you're like, oh, wow, I am actually very lucky. Gratitude is kind of a crazy thing because like it really, it really can help bring you out of funks, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in dealing with my depression and my anxiety, one of the things that does help is if I can get myself into that mental spot, which can be mm-hmm. difficult. But when if you can just be like, let, even if I feel like garbage, if I'm just like, what am I grateful for? What am I grateful for? It mm-hmm. really, even if it just loosens it up a little bit, it really makes mm-hmm. a difference. I also started mm-hmm. working on my, so I bullet journaled last year. I had a pretty just like simple bullet journal. It was, I'm not a very organized person, should we say? <laughs> like, <laughs> I can just be like a little out, just my brain not doesn't. There you go. Just like what I said, doesn't work like like that. Um, So the bullet journal was a really good way to stay organized. So I like decided this. What is a bullet journal? I keep hearing this. They're so great. What the fuck is a bullet journal? So first of all, I think it started. I think that like my ex, my old roommate, her like ex boyfriend invented the bullet journal, which is a really weird thing. And I think he was trying to sell them like as a. (laughs) completed journal but now people are like oh you can just make your own like for very little money so Uh, you buy a journal and then it's a method of organizing yourself and the idea the main idea is that everything that you need Mm -hmm. to like stay on top of things is all organized in the journal the number one aspect of the journal that makes it functional is that you have an index in the front so if you're looking for where's my notes about that class I took you have all the pages, you number all the pages, and then you can check on your index what, what page is this on. And that's really helpful <laughs> because my oh. notebooks are just like full of, I, I could never go back and find like, where was that note that I took about the song that I wanted to work on or whatever. Right. But then I have a song note section and I can go on my index and be like, where's the song note section? Here are my notes. So that's oh. really, and it's all in one book. So that's like the main part of it. But people have also taken it to this other level where they're really cute and they spend time like making them really cute and you can do there's like a book list of books that I've read page you can do or like I start I this year I'm going to try to do a um, food prep page where you Mm -hmm. can like uh, use stick stick notes sticky notes to like Mm -hmm. write you know Monday I'm going to have tuna or whatever and then you can like change them every week Um, there's but the other one that is really helpful is having a, a habit tracker habit tracker yeah so if you're like i want to work out every day oh yes Mm -hmm. so then you can see did i actually how much did i actually work out this month how much did i i want to read for 10 minutes a day that's like a goal habit thing Mm -hmm. did i do it did i not and i think one of the things that i like about that is it's similar to the and you can even say did i do my gratitudes today what i like about it is it's like at the end of the day you kind of go back and say how did i spend my day how did my day Mm. go did I accomplish this? And it's it's not, it doesn't have to be a thing where you feel guilty if you don't do it, but just noticing like, why am I resisting this thing? Why am I not doing mm. this? Why is this so easy? Maybe I'll take that off my habits because it's become such a habit that I don't even have to think about it anymore. You know? Mm. So you can, yeah. Anyway, so the bullet journal is just a nice way. You can do it and, you, and it's yours to do whatever you want with, you know? <laughs> so if you want to, it's not like a thing you buy pre-made. You make it mm. to suit your life. Huh. Yeah. And my first one. Yeah. My first one was like it doesn't if you're not creative or like uh, crafty. My first one was not cute. It was just writing. It was just letters. It -hmm. was just very simple. Um, And then this year I was like, oh, like doll it up a little. But I do recommend that for people that are trying to like, I don't know, get on top of their life a little bit, you know, and Mm -hmm. and if they like if they like to use their phones for taking notes and and also your to do list can go on there and that kind of thing. Um. But I like to do things kinetically. I like Mm -hmm. to write things out. So, Mm -hmm. but I also end up having like seven journals going at the same time. Right. And that's a pain in the ass. So this keeps it contained into one. 
Well, a friend texted me and was like, do you have a, do you use a daily planner? And I was like, no, but I mean, <laughs> I've always wanted to, but I didn't want to lug it around. But these days I'm not going anywhere. So sh- yeah, yeah exactly. I would totally. So she got buy one, get one free. So I am actually getting a daily planner sent to me so I can That's plan great. my days. Yeah. And you could even maybe bullet journal that up depending yeah. on how it's like set up. So, you know, the other thing too, is it can be a thing you don't have to lug around, but you keep it at home and you just look at it at the end of the every day or the beginning of in the I morning. I like that. And then you write down your thoughts three things you're grateful for yeah exactly. so then when you look back you're like oh shit I actually had a lot of cool stuff happen yeah yeah huh can you do a dream journal oh you know what I mean but all that can be in there so anyway google bullet journal you will it'll keep you busy for hours (laughs) there's so (laughs) much stuff about bullet journaling now well I do want to I came across this one thing that I wanted to bring up hold on let's see oh (laughs) um this is a New Year's Eve annual renewal ritual. Ooh, I yes, found love this. it. Mm-hmm. I found it I love on how Pinterest. This is becoming a witch podcast. I love I it. Know. <laughs> I'm just so into it. <laughs> well, this is very similar to your cutting exercise, but this is to be done. And I think for a lot of people, maybe not in New York, but well, some people in New York, but if you can build a campfire on New Year's Eve and um basically this thing I can't says do that, but <laughs> yeah just uh light uh d- is it gas or electric? I was just gonna mm-hmm. say I got a gas I mean uh, yeah gas stove I'll just set that up I'll turn that oh, on that's good I mean <laughs> I got a sure. fire extinguisher right next to it so yeah you just go gotta wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so basically the purpose of this is the f- there's two parts to this ritual and the first part is to release painful experiences so number one you're supposed to center yourself around the flames And be, you know, in the current moment, on loose paper, write down a lesson that you are ready to release. Anything that you've been struggling with, it can be an illness or debt or loneliness, abuse, a painful relationship, anything you want. You can write it down and it's the lesson as you as you want, but make sure that everything is released before. Oh, wow. Um, You can write as many lessons as you want, but make sure that everything is released before the clock strikes 12. (sighs) So you do one lesson at a time, and after you finish with your first lesson, you move on to another. And so then, once you're ready to release all this painful, you know, built-up stuff from this past year, you take each lesson, and you look at it, and you feel it, and you have it move through you, and then you throw it into the fire. Yeah. That's that's nice. Uh, if you have rocks, what? can you use those? Crystals? Uh, it doesn't crystals. say, it, but I'm, I know that that can be something as well. It doesn't say this on this, but this is shadow work known, you mm, know. Yes, um, I know all about shadow work. Yeah. <laughs> so it allows awesome. yourself to feel it, accept it, pass it through you and move the fuck on. And with all the lessons are burned. Um, oh, this is nice. When all the lessons are burned, I suggest you take a cleansing bath or a quick shower. Yeah. So it's just that. like. You know, well, you're going to be smelling that. of campfire anyway. So, or oh. gas. <laughs> yeah, or, or gas. I know what I'm going to be doing on New Year's. But I like it. It's it's very much a, you know, anything that's like you want to let go. Mm-hmm. But you have to get it out. And, and uh, what does it say again? Um, feel it, accept it, pass it through you, move on. Yeah. I love that. I love that too. Well, so I know what I'm doing. 20, I'm going to write down 2020. Feel it, accept it, fucking nope, no more. 2021 or 2020? 2020, no more. That's uh, gone. Out, I see. Burning, burning. <laughs> out, 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 damn spot. Yes. Yes, yes. I hear you. And then ready for 2021. Oh, God. I think it's going to be great, you guys. I'm hopeful. It's going to be what we make of it, right? Biden, I think, is in the perfect position as a politician. In his career, he's been thinking for the last 50 years of what he wants to do. He knows everybody in Washington. Uh, and he doesn't give a fuck because yeah, he he's old. He re- I hope he doesn't. He really shouldn't give a fuck. We'll as long see. As, he, as long as he doesn't, uh, as long as he's not like, yeah, let's give all the money to rich people still. Like, as right. long as the right. fucks that he doesn't give have to do with helping people, which I think is possible. And I also think that uh, if you live in Georgia, <laughs> don't forget oh, to vote. Oh, gosh. Don't don't forget to vote, you guys. You tell your friends to vote. That's another big one. But um, yes. I'm hopeful about that too. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, we yeah. did it, you guys. 
We did do it. I hope we did 2020. <laughs> this is our last episode of 2020. So we got through this crazy freaking year together. I'm Figured very proud out of how to pod remotely. Yep. I'm proud of all of us. <laughs> yes. All of us listening. All of us here. Um, you're doing great. Even if you feel like you're not, I promise you're doing great. And um, you got this 2021. Oh. <laughs> Send us emails. Let us know what your resolutions are. Maybe you're going to help help us out, help other people out. Uh, it's not. It's never too late. We'll read. We'll read resolutions of the new year. Yeah, we'd love to hear what you're planning for 2021. And also, if you want to join our fan club on Patreon, please head on over to Patreon.com/slash Reformed Tours. It's all. It's basically like joining our fan cult. <laughs> yeah. Who you know? want to join our fan cult? You should. Yeah. Come do it. Yeah. Come on over. Yeah. We have big things planned for 2021. Yeah. Don't know what they are quite yet, but we're going to we have some we're going to center center focus except complete. <laughs> what <Yes>. was it? <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for listening everybody. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs>